Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this tutorial I'm going to be going over enhancing your portrait photos using Adobe Photoshop. Now this video is a continuation on from last week's tutorial and if you didn't see that I pretty much showed how to soften skin, enhance hair, enhance eyes, enhance lips, whiten teeth and all that kind of stuff using Adobe Lightroom 4. So if you didn't see that I'll put an annotation on the screen and a link in the description and this is pretty much the stage that we got left with. So as I said also in the last video that this isn't a very good portrait whatsoever and I'm aware of that so don't go complaining that it's not. It's just probably the best photo that I could find with the most front on face that I can use for you know this kind of retouching kind of example. So let's get started. In this video I'm going to be going over brightening and softening the background. I'm going to be going over removing this kind of hair here on a forehead how to add in lens flares and maybe some other stuff and the final thing that we should be left with is something similar to this. Yes, it is pretty over edited, but feel free to do it to the extent that you wish and you don't need to copy me exactly. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is duplicate our background layer by pressing Ctrl J and this is so we always have our background layer there and we don't need to touch that. So what we're going to do from here is take care of this hair on our forehead uh, first off. So this is really simple to get rid of something like this. All we need to do is grab our healing brush tool here and you want to make sure that the brush size is just big enough to edit this out. Any bigger and you're going to start noticing it. You just want to make it as small as you can to fit that hair in. So what we're going to do is hold the alt key on our keyboard and you can see that this kind of target sites here pops up. So what this is, is it's pretty much asking you to tell Photoshop where to uh, take a reference from or take data from and you pretty much want to select something with a similar skin tone so I'm going to click right under it right here okay so we're just going to select somewhere around here make sure that your brush is almost fully soft you don't want a solid edge otherwise it's going to be really noticeable then we're just going to paint over the area here and then Photoshop's going to do its best to kind of blend it all together after we let go of our mouse click so you can see it's all looking pretty good right now and of course take your time with it don't rush through it like me and you will get a much better result Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that, and then we're just going to fix this part up here. And if we zoom out, you can see it's not noticeable at all, and that's pretty much all right. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So from there, we're going to create a new layer. So clicking down here, or going up to Layer, New, and then Layer. And then what we're going to do in this one is start softening up the background. So to do this, you can either use the Brush Tool or the Gradient Tool, whichever one you find easiest. And we're going to go down to our color picker down here and kind of just get this nice soft yellow kind of color here. And the reason I chose this color is because you can see it, the rest of the image is made up of this kind of tone or really soft greens. And you might want to vary it depending on your specific photo. But for me, this color works really well. So what we're going to do now is right click and set our brush size to maximum. Again, you might need to vary this depending on your photo. Just for me, this is a full resolution photo so you can see uh, this brush size is going to work well. Then you want to make sure that the hardness is zero and just paint over this right here. Now the effect this is going to give is it's just going to soften everything up, make everything look a tiny bit yellow and it should look pretty good when we're done. So we're going to go to our blending mode up here and choose screen. Now from there what we're going to do is drop our opacity down to probably about 45 and you can see the effect it's giving there. It's just kind of softening up the background. So now, of course, we don't want it on our face, so to fix this, what we're going to do is go down here and enable a layer mask, and you can see this white box pops up here. So with layer masks, what happens is white shows the mask and black hides the mask. So pretty much if we select black on our color palette down here, grab our brush tool and paint over, you can see it hides the mask wherever we paint black over. So if you don't want the mask on her face, you pretty much just paint her face over with a black brush and you should be right. So after we've done that, just paint over her shirt here and I might make it a nice big brush and just leave a little bit kind of spilling over onto the side of her shoulder here to give a nice effect. And that's pretty much all right there. And then we'll just clean up her hair over here. Again, take your time and you'll get a better result. Um, so that's pretty good right there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create a new layer. This time we're going to select white on our color palette. Grab the exact same thing, so if you use the gradient tool, go ahead and use that. And we're pretty much just going to do the exact same thing. And then what we're going to do is just bring our opacity down. And this is just going to take out a bit of that yellowish color. And it's going to soften it up just that much more. Now, if you don't really like this effect, then don't create the second layer. Or you don't even need to create that first layer. Um, or you can just lower the opacity if you do like the effect, but you think I'm doing it too strong. 
it's really up to you you don't need to copy me exactly and then again if you didn't see what I just did I just pretty much copied that exact layer mask so go down apply it and then paint over your subject again and you can see we're starting to get the overall image result. Now the final thing we're going to do is apply our lens flare. Now I don't really know of any good way to get a good lens flare using Photoshop. Photoshop has those built in ones but they're not very good. I'm sure there's probably some brush packs out there that give some pretty cool lens flares that you can use. Otherwise try and find like a graphic designer or someone who does speed arts and usually they do giveaways of uh, media packs and stuff like that and usually they have kind of these lens flares here. Now this is one I did make for a friend and I won't be putting it up for download since um, none of these are really good for photography except for like one or two of them. Um, but find someone who does use them. If you're wondering how I did create these, I used Video Copilot's Optical Flares plugin for Adobe After Effects. So if you have After Effects, you can use that plugin there and it's a great way to get good lens flares. So what I'm going to do is just drag that in, resize it and position it to however I want. So I might rotate it a little bit. And you can see we're kind of getting the effect that we have in our final picture. Now from there we can go ahead and change the blending mode to something like screen. Okay, so as you can see the color is a little bit off, but to fix this we're just going to rasterize this layer. Now we can press Ctrl U or go up to Image Adjustments Hue and Saturation. Click Colorize and then move over to a similar kind of yellowish color that we painted the background with. And you can see that's giving off quite a nice effect and we've added in a lens flare. So that is pretty close to the original I had here. You can see this one's a bit softer. I've softened up the background a bit more by applying a blur to it. Um, nothing hard at all. Um, so that is pretty much how I achieved that effect. I hope this helps. Sorry it was a bit rushed. I'm just a bit busy at the moment. I have quite a few things I need to do. Um, otherwise, that is pretty much it. Next week, I will either be going over Adobe After Effects masking, so explaining what masking is useful, going over all the basic tools, or it might be something else photography related, so let me know what you'd like to see. Of course, submit your ideas. And in the next video on Wednesday, I'll be going over good first cameras and lenses and stuff like that to buy. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and wait for that video. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.